Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 8th of August 2011. 435 years ago this day, the cornerstone of the famous observatory Uraniborg was laid uh, at a place aptly called Haven. Today's trivia question is, who built that observatory? Well, the sun certainly has quieted down over the last 24 hours. We've had just one sea flare. Then the x-ray background has dropped to the B3 level. So what's going on? Let's take a look at the active regions and find out. Well, first, we only have three numbered regions on the disk. Region 1261 has now disappeared behind the northwest limb. So that leaves us with region 1263, which itself is approaching the northwest limb, 1268 and 1267. The two regions that I mentioned yesterday, the one out ahead of 1267 and the one on the southeast limb, are still as yet not numbered. It's often difficult to see the details from the full disk movies of what's going on with the individual active regions, so I'm going to try a little experiment today and see if this helps. I'll show you the full disk movie, then I'm going to show you movies of the individual regions so you can see their development in more detail. First I'm going to show you a 24 hour video of region 1263. Note as time progresses that the trailing part of the region becomes more organized. These large sunspots indicate strong magnetic fields and change in the presence of such ma strong magnetic fields gives us our best chance for a flaring activity, particularly large flares. Next, let's take a look at region 1268, the one trailing region 1263 in the northern hemisphere. Notice as the movie starts, the spots are relatively small and disorganized. But as we progress through the 24 hour period, the spots become larger and more organized. This region is growing. Though the magnetic field is weak, there's still a chance of some minor flaring from this region. Lastly, let's take a look at region 1267 in the southern hemisphere. You'll notice as the movie starts, the region looks fairly impressive with some fairly large spots and uh, a bunch of satellite spots. As we get to the middle of the movie, the region ahead ahead of it starts to grow quite rapidly. But by the end, they're both decaying quite quickly. These regions are simplifying and are unlikely to give us any major flares. Now follow those same developments in the magnetic movie. You may have to play it through several times and go to full screen mode to see the details. Towards the end of the transition region movie in the northern hemisphere, you can see there's a huge eruption of uh, stretching from limb to limb. That's a polar crown filament lifting off. I have made a more detailed movie of it so you can see it more clearly. It's a little subtle. Can you see the dark band? stretching from the northeast limb to the northwest limb about halfway up the image. Watch that as it gets darker and then suddenly lifts off. There, did you see it? Now we should be seeing a coronal mass ejection from that. However, it's probably too far north to be geo effective. In the low temperature coronal movie, we can see there are three regions on the limb. One in the northwest, that's region 1261, and two on the east limb, one in the north and one in the south. Compare their relative brightness and dynamics and you'll get some idea of what to expect from these new regions compared with region 1261. Unfortunately the SOHO coronagraph data is running a few hours behind us so we can't see whether there was a coronal mass ejection off the north limb associated with that filament eruption but probably be able to see it in tomorrow's movies more clearly. I think the only apt description for the solar wind at the moment is confused. The density is relatively low but the velocity and the temperature are all over the place. And it's hard to see a trend in any of this data. The GOES electron detectors show that the high energy electron flux is relatively high at the moment. From the proton detectors, we see that we're still in the decay phase of these big proton events that we've had the last few days. The NOAA satellite shows us that the auroral zone is quite active at the moment. However, the KP index has been varying only between 1 and 3. In summary then, the x-ray background has fallen to the B3 level, the sunspot number has increased slightly to 89, the radio sun intensity is at 105 solar flux units, solar wind speed is at 560 kilometers per second with a density of much less than one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that we still have a good chance of getting C flares, uh, but the chance of getting M or X flares is reducing. The sunspot number should go lower. There's still a good chance of getting coronal mass ejections. The solar wind speed should drop lower. But there's a very low chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours. In the slightly longer term, the composite coronal image shows us that we don't have any major regions due back for at least a week. 
So therefore, we must rely on either growth in the existing regions or the emergence of new regions for increased activity. If you'd like to find out more about what's going on on the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the Sun today, go to my channel. They're all listed there along with some other videos that you might find fun to watch. The answer to the trivia question was Tycho Brahe. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.